Hi everyone, we are on to our second connective tissue and that connective tissue is cartilage. <clears throat> We've already been through connective tissue proper and loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, dense regular connective, dense irregular connective. Now we're on to our second type of connective tissue and that is cartilage. And when we talk about cartilage, um, we are talking about um, a, a tissue that has a function of connecting the skeleton, especially the skeleton in vertebrate embryos and in human babies. Um, in fact, the skull of the human baby is not developed until almost a year into their life. Their skull is mostly cartilage, very functional because that can be squeezed through the vagina for the birth canal um, at birth and then it gradually increases in dimension throughout the first year where the brain grows exponentially during the first year. In fact, it's interesting as an EMT, we're, we're trained to get a pulse on a baby at the brachial artery, but it is very difficult to do. And so what we do is we watch the fontanelle, which is the surface between the cartilage at the top of the head, and we count the pulse at the fontanelle. Much easier to do. So. Um, Cartilage is a rubbery and compressible and highly functional tissue that can um, that can be compressed and also protective at the same time. It in the adult vertebrates it reinforces the trachea and the bronchi of the respiratory system. It also withstands pressure in the spinal column and in in women in the pubic symphysis. It can compress and it can expand during birth. So um, this protects our, um, our body from shocks, especially around the knee joints. Interestingly enough, many researchers are looking into the cartilage of woodpeckers that protects their skull and brain during all their woodpecking. So cartilage is really very, very important as a connective tissue, and we're going to look into it in terms of a functional model and then go into the form of the model. When we go into the form of cartilage, we think about the cells that make up the cartilage and the extracellular matrix. These are the two hallmarks for connective tissue. We're going to look into the cells first. Those cells are known as chondrocytes. Now, that might be hard to remember, but I'm giving you a mnemonic that might help you out a bit. Um, chondrocytes actually come from the word chondros, which is the Greek word for a, a, the upper abdomen. And you might say, well, what's that got to do with, um, with cartilage? The upper abdomen is the area where you have your false ribs. Actually, they are cartilage rather than bone right in the front. And from the Greek, hypochondriac was a person who feels like they have a stomach ache all the time. They feel like they are always feeling um, under the weather, literally under hypo, under their upper abdomen. They feel um, they feel sick all the time, hypochondriac, and these are known, cartilage cells are known as chondrocytes, which means that they are cartilage cells in this area, the false ribs. Chondrocytes secrete chondroitin sulfate. You might have heard of chondroitin sulfate as a nutritional supplement, um, but Chondrocytes and cartilage release chondroitin, chondroitin sulfate along with tissue fluid into these pools that they form. And the pools are called lacunae, which is from the Latin word for pool. And they, those lacunae can house several different chondrocytes along with the chondroitin sulfate and the tissue fluid. All of those are worked into the extracellular membrane, which is a combination of fibers and ground substance. 
we know that because that is basic to um, connective tissue. When we are looking at the fibers of cartilage, we are looking at collagen fibers for cartilage, some elastin, but mostly under the um, microscope, which you're going to see in a second, it's, it's collagen fibers. The ground substance is a rubbery complex of that collagen and the chondroitin sulfate and some t tissue fluid. It is a, a really firm rubbery substance. Think about the, verte um, the vertebral discs in your spinal column, and you'll get a feel for that. Um, when we look at cartilage, we're looking at hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, and fibrocartilage. So when we think about cartilage, we can divide it into three different areas based on the um, cellular makeup, the, con um, the chondrocyte cells, and how prevalent they are, based on the fibers and how much elastin fiber is in, in there and how much collagen fiber is in there, and then really also based on the consistency of the extracellular matrix. Is it more rubbery? Is it more spongy? And is or is it more firm? So let's get into it. We have three cartilages there. We'll start with hyaline cartilage. And hyaline cartilage, if we look at it, let me move this over a bit so you can see better. Hyaline cartilage is the tissue locale. And the one we're going to talk about right here are the costal ribs. These costal ribs are known as false ribs. They actually connect the, um, the bones of your rib, which are in white, these costal ribs are in red. They are cartilage. Down here, they connect your bones together in your upper abdomen to protect all of your abdominal organs. Your liver, your pancreas, your gallbladder are all protected by, um, by bone ribs that are fused together by cartilage ribs. These cartilage ribs also resist con compressive stress. And so if you fall, you are protected by the compressive nature of the hyaline cartilage. As an EMT, when we find people are impacted by airbags and they say they have chest pain, we know how to decipher whether or not they're having a heart attack and that's why they had an accident or if they are feeling the compressive pain from the cartilage. So this, this area does compress very well with cartilage that form for the cells within the tissue are of course chondrocytes. These are the lacunae, the pools that can hold one or more chondrocytes. This is holding three chondrocytes with three nuclei. That's how you know. This will also, this pool will also hold the chondroitin sulfate and tissue fluid. And these pools are throughout the extracellular matrix which in this costal rib is actually a firm and you can see a smooth matrix there. This is a rubbery matrix um, in here that is firm and smooth. It has some collagen networks in here. You can see one here, you can see one there, but collagen are really scattered and they're almost imperceptible. This tissue, hyaline cartilage, is really known by its smooth extracellular matrix and the lacunae. Keep in mind, this is magnified 470 times, more than your microscope that you have at home can get to. Keep that in mind because we're look, going to look at other, um, other um, micro, microscopic enlargements. When we talk about elastic cartilage, the tissue location that we're going to be talking about is the outer ear. You can also find elastic cartilage at the epiglottis. The epiglottis is an elastic flap that protects the trachea so that food doesn't go down your windpipe into your bronchi. So the epiglottis is... <laughs> very important. And um, it is an elastic shape that can fit over the trachea when it's enlarged or when it's reduced. It might be enlarged 
if you're talking while you're trying to eat. Um, the tissue format that we're talking about, the tissue form for this elastic cartilage is, of course, the chondrocyte. They look different here because they are enlarged more here at 510 times so that you are seeing um, many, um, many chondrocytes, not so much as the lacuna this time. These chondrocytes are out on their own and they are surrounded by an extracellular matrix that has a lot of lines to it. These are all the elastic fibers. So while there is some collagen in there, there is more elastic than in other cartilages and it is in the extracellular matrix. When you look at and you need to identify under the microscope, um, you will see for this cartilage that you are looking at elastin um, fibers in the extracellular matrix. That's what you cue in on. Remember, you're, you don't see any um, environment here, so this can't be epithelial cells. These are connective cells, and then you have to identify the connective cells. The way you do it is through the extracellular matrix for elastic cartilage. When we are looking at fibrocartilage, let's think about where the tissue is located for fibrocartilage. The, one we're, the ones we're going to concentrate on are in the intervertebral discs of the spine. Obviously, they take on and absorb an enormous amount of um, pressure and they absorb ch shocks when you fall at your, um, your um, fibrocartilage in your spine compresses to protect your spine. So these are your intervertebral discs made up of fibrocartilage. You will also find fibrocartilage in the pubic symphysis of women in their hips. So their hips can expand during pregnancy and their hips can contract during childbirth. Um, so this, uh, this fibrocartilage can also be found at the discs of the knee joint that are um, that are absorbing the shocks of running and the tissue format are still the chondrocytes but they look different here because look at this magnification it is much lower it is about one 20 percent of what you saw in elastic cartilage so as a result these chondrocytes are going to look much smaller. You see a bit of the lacunae, but the lacunae take on a shape that goes with the collagen. These are thick collagen fibers and thinner collagen fibers here. There is a bit of give to this, but not many elastin fibers. There are some, and you'll see them in here, but when you look at a microscopic view of fibrocartilage, you are struck by the extracellular matrix and the thicker collagen fibers in there. So keep that in mind for um, looking into um, fibrocartilage, you will also see some thin elastin, but you will be struck by the large collagen um, uh, fibers that are in fibrocartilage. I will see you on the next slide.